Hi, it's Anne, and we're still getting ready for the holidays. Today we're going to do a fun, super easy little project to put into our Christmas journal. We're going to make a belly band. If you are new to junk journaling, uh, let me quickly explain what a belly band is. A belly band, I don't have any in here to show you yet. I will in a little bit. But a belly band is um, a strip usually of paper, something sturdy, uh, that you anchor at the top and anchor at the bottom of the page, but it's left open so that you can slip cards, uh, goodies, other things underneath it. And they're super useful in junk journals. And they're really fun to make out of fabric. So we're gonna do that today. I went back to the kit that I assembled uh, during um, uh, one of the first episodes of this series. And I had thrown in just like little bits of um, some Christmassy colored fabric that I had in my stash. Um, you know, a little bit of flannel, there's a little bit of homespun. Some of them I, I sewed into some patchwork that I used uh, for a, uh, pockets here front and back and having flannel especially for something in the winter winter here in the states anyway uh there just is a lovely uh, uh, tactile cozy feel to having um having that kind of uh, uh, slightly fuzzy fabric in a journal so we're going to make a belly band i have cut some of my fabric into very small little squares. I could have cut them, you know, just into m m random mishmash of scraps, but I cut them into fairly regular um, pieces. If you don't happen to have any flannel in your stash, I'll tell you something you might have. You might have an old flannel shirt that has the elbows uh, <laughs> blown out or paint on it, or it's otherwise worn. <clears throat> Go into your closet your closet of things that uh, you were uh, maybe gonna make rags out of and see what you can harvest there for this project. I was extremely lucky because Dan uh, some time ago had relegated his uh, red and green flannel shirt to the rag bag because he had gotten paint on it and had one elbow that was ripped. So I said, don't put that in the rag bag just yet. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that. I'm gonna make these strips fairly small. This is obviously one of one of, one of the sleeves from said said worn out flannel shirt. I'm gonna just come in with my pinking shears, although you certainly don't have to use pinking shears. But I have them so I'm going to use them. And and I'm just gonna cut them into little pieces. A little goes a long way. I have enough from that one shirt that it could last a goodly, goodly amount of time. I'm gonna make them, how, how wide is this? This is about two inches wide. I'm gonna kinda cut it down the middle because I want my pieces to be about an inch, an inch and a half wide. And we're just gonna kind of pile, that's gonna be enough for now. We're just gonna pile these, uh, these little flannel scraps onto a base, and then I'm gonna machine stitch them together. There's one with a little more red in it. We'll arrange our colors somewhat. The other thing I added to my little stash of fabric for this kit is um, I had a piece of green corduroy in my uh, in my stash and I just kind of cut the end off of it. This is a pinwheel corduroy like you'd use like for you know little kids pants or something like that. I love corduroy. It has that same sort of soft feel and I thought oh this color would be perfect. So I um, Again, there's really no need to go to a fabric store and spend money on things like this. You probably have, even if you don't have a fabric stash, you probably have some old clothes, uh, maybe a, even an old uh, uh, dish towel or something that's kind of flat. Or ask your friends, ask your neighbors. Do they have any little bits of fabric they can spare? Anybody who has fabric is going to be very happy to share it with you. Um, the other thing I'm going to add to this little pile here 
is some lace. And here's some kind of awful <laughs> lace uh, that I had in a bag that I got from the thrift store. It's ruffly. I do not want ruffles in this. But I do like the sort of the visual contrast of lace, something kind of fancy, with something really humble, like the flannel shirt and the homespun and, um, uh, uh, and the corduroy. I just, I like that idea. Um, I think that's just always a good look for junk journals, is to sort of combine the high and the low, the fancy and the humble. So I'm going to just cut off this little piece that the ruffle was gathered into and get a, get a nice flat piece. And I'm thinking that this is the perfect width. This is about two inches. I think I want my little strips of lace to be a little bit wider than my strips of my soft fabric. So I'm just gonna, we're just gonna cut this and see how it goes when we put our piece together because my idea is that I want to have the lace sort of be behind the cozy pieces, almost like it's a little petticoat under there. These scissors are getting on the dull side. We have a wonderful scissors and knife sharpener here, uh, not too far from our house in Portland. I'll have to throw this in the in the box of things to to take next time we go see her. Her name is Harmony, and um, we usually go see Harmony every year before Thanksgiving, so we can get all of our kitchen knives uh, sharpened. Okay, I'm gonna set the push these aside, and the next thing I'm gonna go to a piece of brown paper. Uh, this is a piece from, actually, from a Chipotle takeout bag. Chipotle is a very good um, uh, takeout um, food, you know, f fast, fast dining restaurant, I guess uh, we would call it, that's very popular here in the U.S. And we had takeout from Chipotle not long ago, and I saved the bag. Now I'm kind of hating to be turning to the inside, this part of the bag that has all of this wonderful, um, uh, albeit uh, contemporary sort of print on it. But guess what? If I'm doing some sort of a food related uh, piece and I want to use lime juice and pepper and onion uh, on some brown, pa uh, brown paper, I am just one takeout meal away from Chipotle to getting um, uh, another bag like this. Um, the width doesn't really matter, but I want to end up with something that is about maybe about an inch and a half wide. So we'll see if this will do it. I'm just kind of folding in the ends. The only key thing that I would really recommend for this base, I'm just gonna make it a little too narrow, is that you want one side, this is gonna be the piece of the band that is going to be directly onto your junk journal page. And, um, you want to have no no seams, nothing to snag what you're putting down. So I'm just gonna kind of fold fold this so I have two edges together. Although I guess it kind of makes more sense if I folded them in the middle. All these extra folds are, are not gonna matter. I'll have the seam be kind of down the middle of this base piece. I think that would be better. You'll see here in a second. Fold, fold that so there. That's where my where the join is going to be. And that way, this is going to be the side that's going to be facing up, and this is going to be the side that's going to be um, flush against the junk journal page because there's gonna be no openings, no seams, no gaps to catch the things that are gonna be going in underneath. Um, let's just do just a little bit of glue. And this is way longer than it needs to be, but I can use the, the spare for, for something else. Maybe we'll even make a second belly band, that'd be cool. We'll see how much time we have today. So tell me if you're doing any holiday crafting yet. 
Are you giving any gifts? Are you giving any junk journals? I hear from a lot of people that are making junk journals as gifts, which, which is fabulous. It's a time-consuming gift, but oh, what a precious, precious gift that would be. Let me know if you're making anything or if you're doing anything for, you know, maybe a holiday-related journal. Yeah, this is going to be, yeah, about an inch and a half. I think I eyeballed that. Kind of okay. All right, it doesn't need to be, doesn't need to have a real solid gluing. Next thing I'm going to do before I get onto my chit chat is to measure this to be about eight and a half inches long, so it'll fit on one of the pages. I'm just going to eyeball that. Good, that gives us a little spare piece. I didn't get that all the way through, did I? There we go. And now we'll be able to see like if we put this on a, on a page like this. See, it's going to glue down just at this end and at this end. And then we'll have room to slip something underneath. That's going to be fine, although it looks like I'm just a hair long. But precision is not really important. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of ribbon you could use a strip of fabric. It doesn't have to be ribbon. And I'm going to use that as a base. We're going to be affixing our fabric actually to this ribbon and not to our paper base. The reason being, we have all these little squares that we're going to be laying here. And I'm going to machine stitch them into place. Um, but the machine stitching is going to be on the back of this ribbon, and this ribbon is what I'm gonna glue onto this piece. And I do that so that, um, because if I were stitching right onto our paper piece, which I could, but then you're gonna have the backside of all that stitching here, and it, it's just more things for our corners to catch on. So I like to give it a little bit of a, little bit of a elevation, I guess. All right, let's bring in our, our little cozy flannel squares. But first thing I'm gonna do is arrange that lace, because I want that in the back. And I'm gonna going to scrap. I'm gonna put just a little bit of glue stick here. This glue stick is not going to be a permanent adhesive. It is not a strong adhesive. It's really not an adhesive at all. Um, in this case, not with uh, textiles or fabrics. It's um, uh, it's just going to be to kind of anchor things in place a little bit uh, until um, until we can um, uh, get them more permanently secured with the machine stitching. Now, if you don't have a machine, you could easily go in and, and, and hand stitch some of this. You could use some double-sided tape if you wanted to. I don't want my ends really straight. I want them a little bit crooked. I don't want them really solid. I want some space in between them. A little bit of that glue is going to be coming through the holes of that lace. And that is also okay because our next layer is going to grab a little bit of that too. See how easy this is? And you could do this. I mean, obviously this is this is for our holiday journal, but you could do this, you know, any uh, uh, with any kind of color theme you wanted. Now we're done with our little lace backgrounds. Now I'm just going to kind of layer. some of Dan's shirt pieces. I'm going to pick out some that are a little more red. And sort of scatter them, not have them, because I'm doing several layers, so I don't, don't want them too solid all in one layer. But 
our lace is always going to be showing on the outside. It looks a little strange now, but then I'm going to lay some of my brighter pieces. I'm going to put a little bit of that corduroy here. And you will find if you are using a fabric like a flannel or a corduroy that has a little bit of a nap to it, a little bit of a fuzz to it, it doesn't adhere to each other. The pieces don't adhere to each other, but they do cling to each other. So that makes it really easy to lay out. Almost makes me think of those toys, those little kits. I think I had some as kids where you had like little felt pieces and that were in different shapes and you'd put them together to form some kind of a picture. I wish I could remember what those were called. I was thinking of them the other day, but you know, again, the felt just sort of clings. And um, and it's just really fun for a kid to play with. I'm going with my very small red pieces now, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of the plaid. And there's no rhyme or reason here. Just go with what kind of looks pleasing to you. And because these fabrics are all pretty thin, it's not gonna make a whole lot of bulk in your junk journal. There we go. Now, after I have it sewn together, because I'm just gonna do some rows of stitching here on my machine, then I'm gonna come back and uh, glue it down um, here. Shall we do another shorter one? As long as we're here. Let's do that. How, how wide is our leftover? I could do a five and a half inch wide piece. And this is one that's gonna go up and down, but this is one that's gonna go horizontally across a page. I kind of like the idea of having two. Here's our little base. Heaven knows we have enough of our of our little lace and flannel pieces. Okay, I'm gonna make certain I have my, oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna set this aside, do the gluing on the ribbon. I have made that mistake before. I get so excited about those um, paper strips, but we're gonna go with that ribbon. And the ribbon, there might be a tiny little bit of this ribbon that peeks through, but you can see here, not really, maybe just a piece or two. You know, so because you're gonna be covering it mostly up, you could really use any color ribbon you wanted. Uh, should we maybe give this one a different look? I'm gonna use the, use the lace. Go back to, oh, there's some right here. And maybe I'll do one, hmm, maybe I'll do one that's all red. No, I don't like that. I'm gonna go with a, the corduroy and the flannel, just like I did on on this one because I just think it looks so cute and you know those little tatty edges you just want to get in there and just uh, just feel them and and um, have them give you that warm cozy feeling I'm not gonna get too precious with the way I'm arranging things I don't know how long I've had this homespun fabric in my stash. I'm guessing about 20 years. And a little bit of the bright red. Red should be a cheerful color. But use whatever pleases you. Oh, I know. I'm gonna make this one a little more organized right down the middle. We're gonna go with these red strips, just sort of in a diamond shape. Maybe I'll overlap a little bit. I 
makes it a little bit different. There we go. All right, I'm going to excuse myself for just a moment and I will be right back. Off to the sewing machine I go. Okay, this took only moments to complete as the sewing machine, but this is a nice, secure little belly band. Everything is stitched down, but it's still floppy enough on the edges that you can get in and ruffle your fingers on it and have that kind of tactile experience. I have a few little threads to snip off, but let's go ahead and put these in our journal. Shall we do that? At least one of them. Let's do the long one first. And what I always like to do is to have a couple of binder clips handy because I want to make certain that this that the uh, that the band dries really firmly top and bottom before I do anything um, or you know before I before I let it to let it to, out to perform on its own. I kind of like this on this ledger page. Yeah, should we do that? Uh, let's get it put on its little strip, its little anchor strip. And I am gonna use my three-in-one glue. It's the same as Fabri-Tac or Fabrifix. It's the same stuff. All marketed by the same company, Beacon, under three different names. It's the eternal mystery of the crafting world. Well, that and art glitter glue. Why is it named art glitter glue when there's no glitter in it? So many gluing mysteries. And yet we craft on, don't we? All right. And I don't have to worry about any of that glue seeping through the fabric and showing because my layers are thick enough there. that they're all going to be obscured. Let's see, I think I might do just a little bit of trimming here. And one thing we could do, if we wanted to, we could put a little embellishment, you know, on the top of this. If you have something, you know, if you have a uh, you know, a, a button that's not too uh, thick. If you have some sort of like a little paper medallion, this is just something off of a Christmas card. That could look super, super cute uh, glued on top of this. I think I'm not going to do anything on top of uh, my belly band right now because I can always add that later. But just keep in mind, you can, you know, you can dress them up in some sort of a way if you wish to do so. Uh, let's come back here. And going to get it glued into place. I don't dare, put, don't dare put my coffee cup there as a paperweight. I'll put my phone prop there. And again, I'm going to use, although this is paper to paper, I'm going to use my, oh, doggone it, look what I did. Yeah, I, um, I glued it down onto the wrong side. Okay, that's easily taken care of. I'm just gonna put a patch on top of it. I can put that right down the middle and that'll be fine. Doggone it, I wish I hadn't done that. Because that was specifically what I was saying, don't do, have that, uh, have that seam. next to the ribbon. I think this is going to be okay. Certainly isn't worth me pulling the whole thing off and redoing the band. So you're getting the crises in real time, but guess what? It's not a crisis. Nothing in crafting is a crisis. Just kind of smearing a little bit of my what, the art glue or the three in one glue that was bubbling out of the top of that spout. And then I am going to come in with an art glitter glue and go right to the edge here. Yeah, 
Yeah, they're just, crafting mistakes are just not worth fussing over. There's always a fix. There we go. So I've covered up that seam. And honestly, it would not have been a crisis even if I had put that seam next to, uh, next to the page. But I want to be a, be true to my word to you and what I recommend. There we go. Now, where were we? We were getting ready to affix this down with our three in one glue that's getting a little, a little low. I should be storing it upside down so it's always at the right end, but. that little bit and there's this little bit and let's press that gently down and then I'm gonna clip it until I know it's dry going to hold that firmly in place because it does take a little while for that beacon glue to dry. There we go. <laughs> oh, that looks so nice. It just, it makes you just want to get in there and pet it, doesn't it? Let's see. I have a, a little tag that could slip in there very nicely and look all Christmassy. I could even, if I, yeah, <laughs> if I didn't use this on top, I could, you know, journal on the back of that and tuck it in there, although it's little enough, it, it might fall out. You know, you, it, it's good to have something with a little bit of uh, thickness to put underneath here so that, you know, so that they stay in place. Uh, the, the larger items seem to stay in place better than the, you know, you wouldn't want just like a small little thing in there that the proportions would be all wrong there. Uh, let's go in the back half of the journal and do that little one. Yeah, I'm liking that there. Trim off a few of those little bits of lace to pull that in proportion-wise a little bit more. And what happened? Here's that strip. Now I'm going to do this the correct way. I'm going to glue this ribbon down to this side with the seam. Oh, had not even planned to uh, do the right and the wrong way here, but we fixed the wrong way fairly easily, didn't we? I bet you saw what I was doing last time and you were probably shouting, Anne, but I didn't hear you. But if you did shout, thanks for doing that. There we go. I got a couple more bottles of these that I hope will get me through the next little while. It's an expensive glue, so I'm careful not to overuse it. I talk about how cute it is and then I immediately go and change it. Just like I am with my grandson. I sit and look, oh, he's so darling, he's so cute. And then I brush his hair. Uh, but that's what we do, isn't it? Do you like that? It's kind of a lot visually next to this... Um, envelope but I yeah no it's it's striking me in a positive way oh look what we're putting next to the page our flat side and there we go let me I can't um, I can't clip it down on this side but I can on the one that's next to the edge And 
I think I'm just gonna put it next to something that's a little on the heavy side here. I'm gonna put, tuck a little piece of scrap paper here in case any of that glue seeps out. And I'll put my, there we go. I'm gonna put that there. But before we do that, let's look at how cute this would look underneath that belly band. That would be super cute. Actually, I think if I just close this up, I'll be okay here. So there are our belly bands, friends. Just get out your little scraps of fabric and your little scraps of lace and thread up your sewing machine, and you're gonna have fun adding a nice, useful feature, but one that's gonna make you really wanna get in there and have a fun tactile experience. I hope you enjoy this, guys. Let me know how it works for you. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week.